Hello friends, good morning, how the devil are you? Welcome to Auto Shenanigans. My name is John and thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Today we'll be looking at the M2 motorway which starts at three crutches interchange in Kent and then heads through Kent for 26 miles and seven junctions before coming to an end at Brenley Corner which is in Kent in Kent. Yep, it's the same Kent in Kent joke that we used in the M20 video, you're welcome. As per most motorways, the M2 was built in stages, however given its short length didn't really take that long to complete. Work started in the late 50s and it was done by 1965. It started life as the A2, a road that can trace its beginnings as far back as Roman times. And indeed, parts of the A2 are called Watling Street, probably one of the better known Roman roads that spans most of the country. The original idea was that the M2 would run all the way from London down to Dover, but as we can see today, they only got round to upgrading part of the route. It would seem that they had second thoughts after seeing the traffic numbers fall following the opening of the M20 motorway not far from here. The remaining part of the A2 that weren't upgraded to a motorway became a dual carriageway instead, and this was deemed appropriate for the traffic levels at the time. One thing that you may have spotted is the name, the M2. Surely if it started life as an A road, it should have the designation A2 brackets M. And it did, but not for long. So how did the M2 get its name was actually a really bizarre story. And at first I didn't think it was true, but it turns out I'm wrong. In 1959, the Daily Telegraph published an article regarding tenders for the nearby Medway Viaduct, and in which they called it the M2 rather than the A2M. And rather surprisingly, the Ministry of Transport saw this and decided to go along with it, and it's been called the M2 ever since. On with the show then, and to kick off, we're gonna look at Junction 1 and how it's changed over the years from its original layout to what we have today. In the early 1990s, the M2 saw an awful lot of widening works and redesigns to its junctions. One such redesign happened here at Junction 1 where if you compare old with new you'll see that before the HS1 railway came along and the A2A9 it was a much simpler affair. Today it's a typical T-shaped interchange and is designed in such a way that sends traffic from the A289 southwards on the M2 so it can avoid the town of Strood. You might also have noticed on the path of HS1 a golf course and it appears to me that they've had to move their clubhouse and car park as a result of the various construction in the area. I suppose we don't really think about that, but it's amazing the trouble one goes to when you want to put new infrastructure in place. Junction 2 has also seen a redesign, and this one fairly extensive. Originally, it offered very short and tight slip roads that allowed very little by the way of accelerating and braking space. And to be fair, this is probably quite a dangerous design. It's very unlikely you'd see a motorway junction designed in such a way in modern times. Just off the A228 is a cycle path or an abandoned road. This used to be one of the slip roads that would link the A228 to the M2 right at the Medway Viaduct. Now, just before we get onto the highlight down the road from Junction 2, I noticed on Google Maps this railway slash motorway viewpoint. So, here's the view. It's quite cool actually, there's sort of like a, a labyrinth of little pathways that bring you sort of in and around the railway track and the motorway. And just over there, you can see Diggerland, and that's exactly what it sounds like. A theme park that offers digger stuff. If you want to dig a massive hole in the ground, that's probably where you're going to want to go. You also get a great view of the Medway viaducts from the viewpoint, which leads us neatly onto the highlight just down the road from Junction 2. I love a bridge and it's difficult to ignore the Medway viaducts as you drive down the M2. Originally there was only one of these bridges and that opened along with the M2 in 1963. This bridge carried traffic in both directions however when the M2 widening came along in the early 2000s a second bridge was added and the traffic separated out onto each one of the bridges. And roughly around the same time a third viaduct came along to carry the HS1 railway across the River Medway. It was on this viaduct that in 2003 Eurostar set a UK speed record of 208 miles an hour and that's nearly as fast as a Saab. Nearly. In the same year, the viaduct received an award for outstanding merit in the use of concrete. I did ask the viaduct for comment, but it's like talking to a brick wall. So congratulations on your 2003 award. How do you feel? Just on that, this award was given by the Concrete Society, a society set up in 1966 for all those who really enjoy concrete. 
And that seems to me like one of those societies that only the English would set up, like the Curbstone Society or the Grit Bin Appreciation Society. I wonder if they're accepting new members. Between junctions two and three, nestled snugly in the woods, is a cart track. Buckmore Park Cart Track started life as a 400 meter long track that was opened in the 1960s by the nearby scout group who were leasing the land at the time. Eventually, they ran out of money and by the 1980s, the track fell into a state of disrepair. But it was saved in the late 1980s and reopened with a new 900 meter long track. The track continued to do good business and then in 2015, it was purchased by John Surtees and he upgraded the track extensively. If you're into your motorsport, then Mr. Surtees needs no introduction whatsoever. However, if you don't know, he was a bit of a legend on both two wheels and four, being the only person to ever win a world championship on a motorcycle and in a car. I'm up at Junction 3 now, and this is another junction that's seen some redesigns over the years. This one involved removing a roundabout and a bridge that went over the motorway. It might not be so obvious nowadays, but behind me is the site of where the roundabout used to be. It's pretty much a bush now. Between Junctions 4 and and five is where you'll find the only services on the M2. It used to be called Farthing Corner Services and opened in 1963. Today, we know it as Medway Services and it's here that we find a sneaky secret motorway junction. Okay, it's not really a motorway junction, but on each side of the service station, you'll find an access road that allows you to exit to the local surrounding roads. Now, of course, it's not supposed to be used as a motorway junction, but it seems to be quite common knowledge that there are no gates or barriers here to stop you. Junction 5, or the Stockbury Interchange, is perhaps one of the most oddly designed junctions I think I've ever seen. I mean, just look at it. It's a mess. I don't see how anybody thought that this was a good idea. I've actually managed to secure some footage showing the design process. Junction 5 offers a great example of the old school way of doing things as it was installed along with the M2 in the 1960s. Currently, the traffic builds up really easily on the slip roads and it's been reported to be an accident hotspot. And as you can see, they're in the process of upgrading the junction to make it, well, better. The A249 that runs through Junction 5 will have an overpass build, taking it over the roundabout, and the slip roads and junction approaches will also be improved upon. I guess we're going to have to check back in 2025 when works are due to be completed to see how they got on. <laughs> Just up from Junction 5 is where we pass the Kent Science Park, where they do science-y things, one imagines. We're not really interested in the science park, but what is interesting is that they're looking to install a new motorway junction to serve the park directly. This new junction will be numbered 5A. I'm gonna change locations because I'm definitely on private land. Let's get out of here. We're still between junctions five and six on the M2, although, well, we're not on the M2, but we're driving in between junctions five and six. And it's between junction five and six where you'll find the largest gap on the M2 between any of the motorway junctions, which is around 10 miles. In 2013, near Linstead, a 15-foot sinkhole opened up, threatening to swallow the entire motorway and the world, maybe. At first, they sent Darren to inspect it, and he explains that because it's under 50 millimetres, no action needs to be taken at this time. Another opinion was needed, and following consultation with those who know what they're talking about, the motorway was quickly closed and repairs undertaken. The land surrounding the sinkhole was scanned with ground-penetrating radar, and with no serious problems to be found, they simply filled it and repatched the motorway. It was concluded to have been the result of excessive rainfall in the area. Remember that? Rain? Junction 6 is another old design in need of an upgrade. It's called the Pericourt Interchange and it's so shit that the slip roads don't even have street lighting. The junction also offers an insight as to what Junction 2 used to look like before it was upgraded because they follow the same design. Junction 6 can certainly lay claim to being the crappiest junction on the M2, but it is also the quietest, so perhaps that's why it's not seen any upgrades as of yet. A mere one and a half miles later and we find ourselves at Junction 7, which marks the end of the M2 motorway where it sort of just stops and becomes the A229. Behind me is not Junction 7, I've driven a few minutes up the road to reach the shoreline and beach near Whitstable. Over there on the horizon is the exotic Sheppey Island, which is home to an indigenous tribe who live cut off from society and the way of life as we know it. It's not advised that you visit because the tribe are known for lashing out violently towards outsiders. And out that way is the North Sea. 
Now, before I say my goodbyes, there is one last important matter to attend to, if you would be so kind. I've set myself a goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers, and looking at the analytics, the majority of viewers don't seem to be subscribed. I really want to hit that 100,000 mark, so if you could help me out with that, guys, it would be much appreciated. And there we are, guys. That's all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, there's a button specifically for that. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.